Words are weird when you really overthink their purpose. Let's take toothpaste for an example. You can easily break that down into two words, being tooth and paste. And that makes sense when you consider what the substance is and what that specific paste is intended to go with. You can apply the same logic to words like keyboard, sidewalk, bed sheets, and classroom. It's easy to see what those words mean because it takes two words you're familiar with and uses them to describe the purpose or appearance of the whole word. And that makes it understandable as to why those words have those names. Now let's dive a little deeper. Let's take the parts of the words I just mentioned and try to understand why those words were chosen to represent the things they represent. Well, a door is a door, sheets are sheets, and paste is paste. There's no questioning that. Now hold on, why is it not a question to anyone? When you really think about it, there's no reason these words represent the things they do. We just heard our parents say them and then our brains only see that as red and that as a towel. This is like how there's actually no reason the alphabet is ordered at all, or how there's no reason that this isn't called 7, or how this isn't called 5. Yeah, that's right, have fun sleeping tonight. I can almost guarantee you I am spreading misinformation right now, by the way. I know there's probably a lot of history behind every word in the English language, so I'm telling you right now that I just don't care. So if I see anyone going, um, actually, I will literally find you in your sleep and will leave you looking and smelling like a garlic knot, all right? It's been too long since this Merriam Webster fella has updated their damn dictionary, so I think it's about time we start upgrading it ourselves. So let's start off with some good examples before we make any rash decisions, if you know what I mean. I don't, there's no double meaning in that. Why do I say this shit? Okay, let's look at desk. I think it's a good word. With the rather strong inflection of D and the four letters, I'd say it successfully represents what a desk is. A non-convoluted object consisting of a stable structure and hard material. I like to have stronger sounding letters represent strong things. Steel, stone, king, punch, power. I'd say these are some good words. But now let's bring in pillow. Sounds kind of similar to the last few words I mentioned, right? So to change that, I'm going to replace the P with a B to give it a softer sound. Now we have billow. That word already exists? Well, I'm going to... I'll deal with that later, okay? Like, now, if you walk into an empty room, what's there? There's a floor, there are four walls, and a ceiling? I don't know, man. I feel like ceiling ruins the consistency of one syllable per word. So to fix that, I'm gonna switch roof and ceiling so that we keep that consistency. Also, I think ceiling could work well representing a roof, or should I say ceiling? Now let's take a look at the animal kingdom. I don't have a problem with any animal names, except for one. Hippos are quite scary. They are probably the most aggressive and murderous living things on this planet. And honestly, I think there would be a lot less casualties from hippos if they didn't have such a cute nickname. Hippopotamus is pretty intimidating, but a hippo sounds like something you want to pet. Why do you think there are stories of people that are like, Oh, look, a hippo! I want to approach it! Followed by the most gruesome and brutal thing that you can think of. It's because the word hippo, to an extent, sheds them in a positive light. To fix that, I'm gonna change the name to Gargantamus, and the nickname Gargon. Now if you see this thing, and someone says, oh, is that a Gargon? You say, holy shit, holy shit, oh my god, oh my god, we- we got- we gotta go! We can't be anywhere near this thing, oh my god. God, because Gargantamus actually sounds like something that could eat a watermelon like it's a grape. Like, if I saw a Gargon in a zoo, I'd start sweating and get lightheaded. I'd be like, oh, fuck. What the fuck? It's so powerful and scary. And then the people next to me would be like, oh, shit. What the shit? It's so big and petrifying. So, yeah. Hippopotamus is now Gargantamus. Now let's move on to some words that have two or more meanings. Let's look at bar. You got the behind bars type of bar and the drink till you drop type of bar. Why does this word represent more than one thing? That's honestly just stupid. So I'm gonna turn the drink till you drop bar to blar so there's no more confusion. This also means that barstool is now blarstool. Now let's take a look at star. A star is this little five-pointed shape, but yet is also... I think I'll keep the five-pointed thing as a star and change the big space monster thing into a cluster. This keeps the star aspect intact, but helps indicate that this thing is a cluster of countless gaseous elements that explode in a couple million years. Have you ever had someone call some good food a delicacy? I always used to think, of course they're delicate. How else would we chew them? But apparently that also just means good food, which is again, 
stupid. So how about we call them foodicacies? Because it's just food, but fancy. Like, who cares? Towns, in a way, are just little cities. How about we call them liddies? Actually, scratch that. That just sounds like I'm asking to be punched. Small city. Smitty. Hey, look who's back in Smitty. Damn, he's going to Smitty on that thing. Bag? Yup. That's a bag. Fiberglass? Nope. That doesn't look like glass at all. And it definitely did not help me go to the bathroom after swallowing six pounds of it. Kind of looks more like silk, so I'm gonna call it synthetic silk. I don't know, grass is a little strong sounding for what it is. So let's call it Glopsipitok for something that's a little easier on the ears, you know? What if we replaced time with coronavirus? So people will be like, do you have the coronavirus? And they'll be all like, yeah, it's 347. Let's call buildings built because they ain't doing shit. How about instead of corner? We call it Slombobader because I think it's easier to remember like that. Drawer sounds too much like drawer, so we'll instead call it a Slimpur because we won't be mixing that up anymore. Wardrobe is now going to be called Knobstry because... It you know what, I don't have to explain my reasoning. I'm changing concrete to Stonkleton. Sales are now flagobes. I'm calling tiles cluners from now on. Amoebas are gonna be called Weepots. Control is now Harlebont. And control is Harlebonthers. Instead of toenail, we call it Froned. Luminal Ultra Microscopic Silico Volcano Coniosis? S. Nitrogen is now clear. We're calling zippers Rones. This Google Doc is really pissed off at me. This little pebble thing? This pebble thing, it's a... Uh, yeah. Neurotransmitters are now buh. Light is now Colser. Smoke is now Julebin. Poison is now Krondas. Case is now Alton. Onomatopoeia is now Ananananea. The is now Elchinu. Run is now Kafflerop. Terror is now Stro. Sticky is now Snoofib. Incomprehensibility is now F. If is now Yogurt. Yogurt Homer is now, now Yogurt. Stupid. Hands are now, now Ovens are, are now Of Out Hot. Are now